If you visit Copenhagen, you might not spot the Colony Haver or Colony Gardens. These little green oases, hidden behind their high hedges, are a uniquely Danish phenomenon. They're somewhere between a summer house and an allotment, private green spaces with a simple wooden house, often without hot water, sometimes without electricity, for use only in the summer months. Places to escape the city in the city. I have had my Colony Heo 21 years. Originally, it was built in 1937, so it's an old house. It's 10 minutes from the city center, five minutes from the airport, and just an eight minute walk to the beach. The original idea was Colony Haver would provide the working classes with a small patch of nature to call their own for a token sum, a place to foster hygge, the Danish sense of coziness. As Copenhagen expanded in its famous finger formation, in between the concrete fingers were these green spaces. The second I get on my bicycle and ride out here, I can just feel that I'm leaving the city behind. And the moment I enter the gate here, my shoulders drop, even the blood pressure drops. I just enter a little, a little paradise and it's, uh, it's so healthy. It's so healthy. A sense of community is an important aspect of Colony Haver life and owners get together regularly to help keep the communal paths and gardens in shape support each other with building projects, or just socialise. In this little community, we decided a few years ago that every three weeks we have a dinner where we cook together and we eat together. And that's very, very lovely. And you get to meet people that you won't normally meet. And so, so the, the diversity of people out here is something that I really appreciate. And I'm not sure it would be the same if I bought an expensive summer house up north. I think it makes me a better person to, to live between people that I won't normally meet. Copenhagen's building boom has put pressure on the colony haver, many of which are leased from the local authority. Some have been lost to the bulldozers, others are now surrounded by high-rise apartment blocks, but they're more popular than ever Families hand them down through the generations. Jesper says that waiting lists can be over six years and plots change hands for over two million kroner. That's more than 200,000 pounds. I had a friend who had a house out here 10 years ago and I really liked coming here to visit. I was in my early 20s. For some reason, I was just smart enough to get on that waiting list. At some point, I could see myself having a gun like that. So luckily, I, I did put my name on the list. A lot of people my age are becoming more interesting in Colony here. It's still affordable, and you could have the benefits of both worlds. I really need to be in the Copenhagen area for my line of work. With this Colony here, I could also have a little garden and grow stuff. The Danes are really good at meeting across the classes, across the generations, and across political divides. Colony Haver are a good example of this, particularly now as the older generation of owners, who were perhaps a little more conservative, hence all the flagpoles. They're moving aside for a younger, more diverse demographic. In a summer house, you have a little bit more secluded area. Here you're still pretty close to each other, and you talk with each other. For me, that's also a really nice thing about it because it's my first year of, of setting up my garden. So there is a lot of stuff I don't know. And now I just have friends across the area here that, that, uh, that could help me with this. The older generation, they know how to do a lot of stuff that I wasn't told when I was a kid, like how to fix stuff. There's so much to learn from that older generation and this kind of community is perfect for that. This is still Scandinavia. There are rules. You must maintain your plot. If not, be prepared for complaints. So now we have an anlagt one bed, which works really well. And this we have tried for two years. And now we start with to do it on the rest of the house. But it also means that 
rest, altså det have, som ikke er vildt, bliver nødt til at være meget øh, ordentligt. Altså, så vi skal bygge nogle, øh, nogle stier, vi kan gå på, øh, sådan noget for. ellers så kommer det jo bare til at ligne øh, nogen, der ikke har passet det. Og det har også haft sine udfordringer, fordi at det er svært for den ældre generation at forstå, øh, hvad er det, jeg gerne vil, fordi det er jo bare ukrudt. Men det er jo ikke det for mig. For mig er det øh, øh, naturen, og, øh, og, 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 og vi ser jo forskelligt på øh, også, hvad vi synes er smukke ting. With waiting lists growing and the city council showing no signs of building more colony haver, some owners have taken the decision to curb speculation by putting a ceiling on the value of their properties. Vi ligger på øh, en lejet grund øh, på kommunen. Det gør, at, øh, at, og at vi også har taget en beslutning i vores kolonihaveforening, at det her det er et, et, et plads i Sydhavnen, som jo er et, øh, et socialt udsat sted. Så øh, her er vi ikke, har, har vi aldrig været rige. Altså, det er ikke en rig i bydel. Så det kan godt være, at man kan bygge for 300.000, men dit hus bliver ikke 300.000 værd. Der ligger ligesom sådan en, jeg tror, det ligger omkring, det må ikke koste mere end 100.000. Og sidste år blev der solgt en kolonihave her for 2.000 kroner. Og det gør mig jo både glad, at, altså sådan, fordi det gør jo også, at min, min egen børn har en chance for det. You find allotments in lots of cities in the world, but kolonihaver are something more than that. You don't have to grow anything. A kolonihaver house needn't fulfill any other purpose than to provide a private outdoor space to escape and recharge. It's a need with which every city dweller, whether in Canberra or Caracas, can identify. Is it time, perhaps, for city leaders to wake up to the potential of the Copenhagen colony haver? For Monocle in Copenhagen, I'm Michael Booth. <laughs>